Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian Movie Enthusiast. This is another Asian Movie Collection addendum video. We have some pretty big acquisitions that I'm showcasing in this video. I've made a number of such acquisitions in recent months, so I'm going to spread them out over a handful of videos coming up in the next few months. So, uh, yeah, there's some, there's some big ones here. Let's just, let's address the elephant in the room right now. Let's just do it right now. So we have the collaborations. Okay. The cinema of Zhang Yimou and Gong Li. Now, uh, this package I've been waiting for, for a little while. Uh, for a little while, stuck in Melbourne for like three weeks. And then the tracking uh, broke, actually, for some reason. It just, it got delivered to my house, and then I double-checked the tracking, and the tracking said it was still in Melbourne. So at some point, uh, you know, it got uh, uh, delinked to my tracking. So it was quite a surprise when it just showed up on my front doorstep. Now this is from Imprint. Okay, that's the, the, the label. I believe an Australian company. And these, I believe, are all region Blu-rays. Okay, I tried them in a few different players, and they worked in both. So, yeah, it looks like it's all region. So we have eight films directed by Zhang Yimou and starring Gong Li. We got Red Sorghum, Judo, Raise the Red Lantern, The Story of Chu Ju, To Live, Shanghai Triad, Curse of the Golden Flower, and Coming Home. So let me read some of the uh, specs and special features here. Um, the intro says this, The films of Zhang Yimou, one of cinema's greatest auteurs and acclaimed Chinese actress Gong Li, have had a profound effect on audiences around the world. For the first time, this eight-disc special edition set collects the eight major works from their remarkable collaborations together. Presented in 1080p high definition from 2K masters from the original negatives. So let's go through some of these films here. Now, one thing to recognize... A number of his films are not in this set. So the set is not complete. So let me just tell you what's not included. I tend to enjoy doing this. Uh, all right, so we got um, a movie called Codename Cougar from 1988, which I've never seen. He's been, he was co-director on that. I have no idea what that is. That's not included. We have uh, sh um, Not One Less is the first big one that's not included in this. And that is one of his best films. So hopefully somebody uh, gives us a tricked out release of Not One Less. Keep Cool is also not included. The Road Home, also not included. Happy Times, not included. Hero, not included. House of Flying Daggers and Riding Alone for Thousands of Miles, not included. A Woman, a Gun, and a Noodle Shop, Under the Hawthorn Tree. Flowers of War, The Great Wall. <laughs> And Shadow, as well as his recent film, One Second. So, a lot of his films are not in here. But I would say for these eight films, every single one of these films is worth watching. And a handful of them are fantastic. Now, I did a Zhang Yimou Top 10 list uh, video years ago. And I gotta, I gotta look that up because I forgot what movies I included on that list. So, of these eight films, the films that I would include in my Top 10 Zhang Yimou films... Raise the Red Lantern is up there. Red Sorghum. To Live. Shanghai Triad. Yeah, those those would be four of the top uh, of my top ten are in this box set. Definitely. Okay, so Red Sorghum is 1988. All right, and this has special features. Uh, film historian Tony Raines has a comment, not a commentary, but he does an intro or something. And then there's an interview with the director. Now, Red Sorghum, all right, uh, set in 1930s China, a young woman, played by Gong Li, is sent by her father to marry the leprous owner of a winery. But she also draws the interest of a worker, played by Zhang Wen, who's a great actor. So Red Sorghum's really good, really good movie. Ju Judo, 1990, again, you get Tony Raines. Uh, all it does is say film historian Tony Raines. On judo, so you must have like uh, I don't know a little spiel on it, and then we have uh, a documentary about Zhang Yimou's early films in an international trailer. Now judo, the first time I saw this movie, I wasn't that big on it. Um, my biggest problem with judo is the little kid. 
there's this little kid uh, who kind of shows up and kind of hijacks the film. I didn't feel like they handled him well. You know what I mean? It's almost like a like a pseudo horror psycho kid, and it, I felt like it was really clunkily introduced and executed. But I watched it again years later, and I did enjoy the film. All right, I think in my opinion, it's one of the weaker films in this set. A lot of people would disagree with me on that. But the use of color in this film and in all of them are really great. So these films look great. Uh, Raise the Red and Lantern, 1991. Again, you get Tony Raines doing a spiel on it in a theatrical trailer. I did a separate review of Raise the Red Lantern on my channel. Check it out. Uh, back when we had our own separate board on IMDb, we did a little uh, survey and like 50 of us ranked Raise the Red Lantern as the best... I think it was the best Asian film of all time. <laughs> so it's 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 very highly acclaimed from both critics and fans. So, yeah. Then we get Story of Chu Ju from 92. Again, you get a Tony Range spiel on it in a theatrical trailer. Now this one, this one I thought was a good flick. I enjoyed it. Let me fire up uh, the write-up here. You have Gong Li as a woman who engages in a legal dispute with the village chief who assaulted her husband and it's kind of a it's a drama it has some everyday living type aspects to it there's some subtle humor and a touch of irony good movie then we have to live from 1994 again same special features tony Raines does a spiel on it we have an interview with gong lee and a theatrical trailer now to live is fantastic um this one let me go fire up my notes a family endures tumultuous events in China as their personal fortunes move from wealthy land ownership to peasantry. And this film has some pretty pretty sharp social commentary. So much so that it was banned in China. <laughs> you know, it's not no surprise to people nowadays <laughs> that that happens. But, uh, yeah. So, it, To Live has some really good commentary. And, uh, obviously, really good movie. It's definitely... It's one of his best to live. Then we get Shanghai Triad from 95. It's kind of a personal favorite of mine, although critics and fans are kind of, they like it, but they don't seem to like love it. So I, I seem to like it more than a lot of other people. I think I do have a separate review of that one on my channel, so check it out. Again, Tony Reigns does a spiel and there's a trailer. And then we have Curse of the Golden Flower from 2006. There's an interview with the composer, a premiere footage, a featurette, uh, multiple featurettes and uh, some trailers and stuff. Now, Golden Flower is another one where I saw it years ago and I'm like, it's all right, you know what I mean? But then I saw it again and I and the set designs and the color scheme just blew me away. Like, just looking at Curse of the Golden Flower is, is really mesmerizing because it's one of the rare films that emphasizes gold and black like really sharp contrast so yeah i really enjoyed uh enjoyed it the next time i saw it but it still seems to be kind of more of a style over substance affair in my opinion and then we get coming home from 2014 and this one again kind of like i would compare it to the story of chu ju in terms of it being more of a laid-back kind of everyday living kind of thing um that's more grounded and uh, just a good drama And the plot of this one is that a devoted couple is forced to separate when a man is arrested and sent to a labor camp as a political prisoner during the Cultural Revolution. And he returns home later, but his wife no longer remembers him. So yeah, that's good quality drama as well. I wonder if that one was banned in China. Probably was. Actually, let me look it up right now real quick. Coming Home, 2014. My internet's firing up here. Production release. It doesn't say. Maybe they did release that. Well, regardless, that's a good flick. So, yeah, this is a very cool set. See, it opens up kind of on the sides here. It has a little gap there where you flip it open. You have red sorghum here. You think there would have been more red uh, on that cover? Pretty cool cover, though. You get a booklet, which I'll show you in a minute. Again, Judo. 
Again, I would expect more color on this. I don't know why they didn't use more color on these two, because uh, these these movies pop with like deep reds and blues and colors and stuff. So it's kind of weird how the artwork doesn't reflect that. Uh, Raise the Red Lantern. This is an appropriate cover. Um, again, check out my review of this one. This movie is really good. In fact, if you're gonna go through these, you should probably go through them in chronological order. But if you wanted to pick one off the bat that, you, that I think would most everyone's going to like, it would be Raise the Red Lantern. Story of Chuju. And Gong Li has some pretty nice range. You know, sometimes she'll be um, kind of like high-end, high-maintenance type style uh, character. And a lot of times she can play just the, the normal, everyday character, too. You have to live... So this is like your high-end version of Gong Li, the, the sassy Gong Li in Shanghai Triad. Yeah, Curse of the Golden Flower. Yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to watching this on Blu-ray. I think the colors are going to pop if the, if the transfer is good. Yeah. And then we have Coming Home. Yeah, this is a director and an actress. This would make a perfect, like... Uh, introduction you know what i mean to chinese cinema because all these films are at least good if not great you know you get solid performances all the way through just good quality stuff you know and uh i i would assume if everybody did like their uh their rankings of these films i i assume that everyone's rankings would be a little bit different you know some people probably have raise the red lantern and to live pretty up high but a lot of the other ones you could be all over the place you know but uh, definitely worth a buy. This is actually kind of expensive. Um, I think with shipping, it was it was at least 150 bucks for this. So this is this is expensive stuff, but it's pretty fantastic. And I've heard that the uh, transfers are good. So who knows? Check this out if you can. Uh, oh yeah, and the, I have the booklet here too. So I may as well do. You get uh, Zhang Yimou's early filmmaking cinematic transition. And you have some write-ups in here. And you have some poster art, which is very similar to the uh, the Blu-ray case art. So I'll have to read this, because these write-ups look good. All right. Now, a film that's a true masterpiece, and that freaking puts these movies to shame. The Magic Crystal. <laughs> I just did a review of this one not too long ago. If you like cheesy action movies, you gotta watch this. It's freaking insane. And uh, I like the slip out cover with the. I like the yellow cases a lot. These yellow cases are pretty cool. Not much special features on this. But yeah, check out my review. This is the Hong Kong Blu ray, by the way. And uh, the transfer on this was good. I fired it up and I'm like, wow, this movie looks pretty, pretty darn good. Way better than the whatever DVD I rented 15 years ago, you know? Now you get a few Nagai Choi Lam films. You got The Peacock King, which of course I reviewed. If you have Yun Bu, just check out my thoughts on my review. This movie's freaking nuts. From the director of Ricky O. <laughs> the story of Ricky. Not, are there any special features on this? Probably not. No. We have Yun Bu, Gloria Yip. Whole bunch of people. The guy, the Japanese actor from Premonition, the horror film, is in this. Much younger in this film. This was an 80s film. It's like a fantasy action horror film. It's good. Not as cheesy as The Magic Crystal, but quite entertaining. Then we have Saga of the Phoenix. Again, kind of like a related film. I think maybe kind of sequel. I haven't seen this movie in years, so I don't remember. Um, I'm not going to read you the plot synopsis. It's, again, fantasy, action, horror. You know, I read some reviews of this recently, and a lot of people thought this was a huge downgrade from uh, <clears throat> Peacock King. Peacock King. And I remember liking this about as much when I originally saw it. So it'll be interesting to see if this is really, if I consider this a downgrade, you know what I mean, compared to the Peacock King. Let me know if anybody's seen both of these. Let me know which one you prefer if you think they're they're on the same level as one another. Again, same director and same actors returning. So I'm assuming this is going to be as good, but you know how it works. 
Um, again, the transfers for these I think are going to be good. Now here's one. A lot of people forget about, and I'm you know I'm going to review Saga of the Phoenix soon, and then um, I'm going to review this one soon as well. The Miracle Fighters. This movie is freaking nuts. Now, almost to the point where it blows every other film that I've shown you already out of the water in terms of pure insanity. Pure insanity. And I look forward to watching this again. I popped it into the Blu-ray just for a minute, and the transfer kind of looked like crap, though. So I don't know. Again, these are all Hong Kong releases that I'm doing uh, the past few. So I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe it was just the scene I was looking at at the time, but uh, the transfer didn't look as good as some of these other ones. So we'll see. Again, this is a crazy movie. I would compare this like to Holy Flame of the Martial World in terms of it's just insanity. It's freaking nuts. It's like a... F I can't even describe it, dude. Watch out for my review. No special features, of course. And then we got two of the big Hong Kong releases that have come out this year. We got the Blu-ray release from 88 films of Ricky O, the story of Ricky on Blu-ray. Tricked out. Look at how thick. Look how thick this release is, too. It's thick. Yeah, Ricky O. If, again, if you haven't seen this movie and you're at all interested in cheesy action movies, you gotta watch it. All right? Now, this release actually does have special features. You got rigid slipcase, brand new artwork from Kung Fu Bob, double-sided fold-out poster, 40-page book um, with some write-ups in it, interview with a legendary voiceover artist, four collectible replica lobby cards, HD restoration, audio commentary with Frank Jang. I'm going to listen to that. He's really good with audio commentaries. Audio commentary with Mike Leader and Arnie Venema. Audio commentary with Kim Newman and Sean Hogan. Audio commentary with Audie Sorley and Chris Link. This movie's such a crazy B movie. They put four freaking commentaries on this thing. Like for Ricky O. <laughs> like, like, did Citizen Kane get this treatment? <laughs> I don't know. It's ridiculous. I'm going to have to watch this movie like five times in the next month just to, just to watch it on Blu-ray and with all the commentaries. It's absurd. <laughs> Interview with Fan Su Wong, trailers, reversible sleeves. I don't think I'll pull out the, the poster, but uh, you get uh, the booklet here. And these booklets, the good quality, you know what I mean? Good quality booklets. Remember, Yukari Oshim is in this one, too, in a supporting role. Oh, man, this movie's just glorious. It is glorious. And here's the Blu-ray case. Ricky O. The inspiration for Shawshank Redemption. In fact, Shawshank Redemption just ripped this movie off because it didn't give Ricky O credit for the story. So, it's a fun fact. Then, final Hong... I mean, a lot of Chinese Hong Kong big-time purchases here, folks. Robotrix. I call it Robotrix. Everybody else calls it Robotrix, but maybe you should have spelled it right if you wanted to pronounce Robotrix. Include a hyphen, you know? See, if you want to pronounce Robotrix, everybody, maybe include a hyphen there. So it's like Robotrix. Or separate the words. Or, instead of spelling it with an X, spell it with C-K-S. So I would know known to spell it, uh, yeah. Well, even then. Well, no, it probably would have been easier. But yeah, I guess it's Robotrix, but can you blame me for calling it Ro Robotrix for the last 15 years? So this release, again, rigid slipcase, brand new artwork from Kung Fu Ba, double-sided fold-out poster, six replica lobby cards, sounds familiar, 80-page perfect bound book, including interviews with actors and whatever. Um... Audio commentary with Mike Leader and Arnie Venema. Only one commentary on this, though. Introduction, um, scenes from the alternate version, yada yada. Great release. Um, I have a review of this on my channel. I have a review of Ricky Yaw on my channel as well, separately. This movie, probably a little bit more offensive than Ricky Yaw. I'm actually kind of surprised they chose this one because it's, 
it got, it's got some dodgy stuff in it. A little bit more uh, um, inappropriate content in this one. But if you're into Category 3 stuff, I mean, come on. All right, so that's that's that side. Let's do the Korean stuff. This video seems to be going kind of long, even though I don't have a ton of stuff to cover, but whatever. Now, the next four films are the Korean purchases I made. I reviewed all of them on my channel, so just check out my reviews if you want uh, more significant thoughts. Um, the reason why I bought all of these is because I noticed in my collection I had, like, old DVDs of them, and I don't know. I liked all these films so much, I'm like, well, I need to kind of upgrade. So, I'm a cyborg, but that's okay. From Park Chan-wook, this is a Tartan release. It's not Tartan Asian Extreme, but it's Tartan. That's good enough for me. Uh, this is the um, Region B, oh no, this, yeah, Region B release, I believe. And the Ricky O and the Robo uh, Robotrix releases are also Region B, by the way. Just so you know. Yes, if you haven't seen this, it's a romantic comedy from Park Chan-wook. I mean, is that, that's all you need to know, right? You know, it takes place in a mental institution, and two of the people fall in love inside, and it's, it's loony, but it's good. Special features, you get trailers, making of, interview with the director, and a music video, probably with Rain, because he was one of the, he was the lead actor, right? He's kind of like a singer. And Im Soo Young is the lead actress, and she's awesome. So check out I'm a Cyborg, but that's okay. Even if you don't like romantic comedies, because because of the director. I mean, it's the director of Old Boy. So next one is the Criterion release of Memories of Murder. Um, I had to upgrade this. Uh, you know, some of the Criterion releases recently, people have been complaining about like the transfers, the way they look. Like the Wong Kar Wai said, people were complaining about that. I mean, I don't watch these films on a loop, so I'm less likely to tell those things. You know what I mean? Like, if you if you changed, if you significantly changed the color scheme of, like, Big Trouble in Little China or Legend, I'm going to be able to tell. <laughs> you know? Or, like, A Tale of Two Sisters or, you know, one of those. I would be able to, because I watch those movies so much, you know? But, uh, I mean, I don't know. I watched this. I thought it, I thought it looked fine. <laughs> But yes, uh, check out my review, one of the greatest Korean films of all time. You get, again, the, the restoration was supervised by the cinematographer, so, I don't know. <laughs> and approved by the director, so, I don't know what to tell you guys. Uh, there's two commentaries on this, featuring Bong and members of the cast and crew. And again, this is a Bong Joon-ho film, if you haven't told. Um, and then there's a critic from Tony Raines. New interview with filmmaker Guillermo del Toro. Interview with Bong about the real-life serial killer who inspired the film. Documentary on the making of, deleted scenes, uh, and some other stuff. Memories and murder. You gotta watch it if you're even remotely interested in Korean film. A Blu-ray upgrade. This is... I don't know who released this. IFC Films or something? This is the American release of The Good, The Bad, The Weird. If you like westerns and you like action comedies, you have to see it. Check out my review. There's no excuse for not watching this. I'm sorry. Um, behind the scenes feature it, a con highlight reel, making ofs, interviews with the actors and the director. <clears throat> I would have liked to have seen a... a uh, commentary on this though with the actors and the director but they don't have that but still i mean this is in terms of just like a purely entertaining western it's hard to get better than this sucker good the bad the weird and here's kind of like the big korean purchase that i got i thought i um covered this in a previous pickups video but i don't know if i did or not i don't think so and this is the bud blue I believe, Australian release of A Bittersweet Life. Now, this film has gotten such crap releases internationally, and anything that was good before is mostly out of print now. I mean, uh, I don't know why. I mean, this what this film isn't, isn't good enough to get a tricked-out U.S. release? I don't know, it's kind of weird. I think it's kind of weird. 
But yeah, this is the tricked out <sighs> Bud Blue release. And uh, you just go to their website and buy it. Look at this book. It, it's like a novel. You know what I mean? I swear I... I swear I covered this before. I might be losing my mind. Um, you get a Korean version. That's why it's so thick. You get a Korean version first. And then an English language version later. You get cast list. You get write-ups. You, oh, you get the script. The script is in this. That's why. So you get the whole script they give you in this. Very nice. Then you get... The actual movie in like a steel case. All right, remember this is like the this is the Kim Ji Woon classic gangster film with Lee Byung Hung in the, in the lead, and uh, it's pretty sweet artwork. You get the smoke going out. If you haven't seen this movie, you should watch it. That's what I'm saying with every film I'm covering basically tonight. And then you get this little uh, fold out pack, and inside of this. All right, and also you get the the card of the restaurant or the the Sky Lounge and Bar. They give you a card, your membership card, uh, to his restaurant. You know, the, at the beginning of the film, he's eating that delicious chocolate dessert that I want. Maybe I'll go there and uh, present my card. Get some pictures, then you get another book. All right, <clears throat> and uh, let's see here. A Bittersweet Life, you get three write-ups. Blood in the Rain, Kim Ji Woon's A Bittersweet Life. And that was written by Corey Hinchin from Pieces of Work. You know, we all know him. Write-up two, if it's irreversible, then I'll keep going until the end. Uh, reviewed by the editor. And then, uh, what is the meaning of the master masterpiece work to an actor? And it's another write-up from another uh, person. This is both Korean and English write-ups in all these. Yeah, this is a... This is the definitive release of this film, is what I've heard. And, you know, when you look at everything that's in here, you, you kind of believe it, right? <clears throat> so, yes. This release, again, a little bit on the expensive side. So, if you can find it for a reasonable price, definitely pick it up. Yeah, if only uh, Lee Byung Hun had better roles in Hollywood films. You know, every time he comes over to Hollywood, his films are mostly crap. But, that's how it goes. <laughs> yeah, this movie has some pretty cool action scenes, and it's very nicely directed. Nice and tight, it's hard to get in. There we go. Alright, that's the Korean stuff. And now we get some, a little batch of Japanese stuff, mostly TV. Let's cover the movies first. Blu-ray release from Third Window Films, Toshiaki Toyota, The Early Years. Yeah, I bought this like a while back and I forgot to showcase it. So this is kind of an older purchase, but still. Um, this includes three of this director's earlier films. Porno Star, which I covered on my channel. I, I like the other name of it, Tokyo Rampage. At some point, someone explained to me why he named it Porno Star, but I forget. I always forget why. I like Tokyo Rampage, I think, is, more, is a more apt title for the film. Nine Souls, which I also reviewed on my channel, and Unchained. So if you want my thoughts, check out my reviews of Tokyo Rampage and Nine Souls. Unchained, I remember being all right. It was all right. It um, it's a documentary on the Japanese boxer Unchained Kaji, who retired from the ring at the age of 30 with an eye injury and a losing record. His attempt at starting a new life as a civilian sees him face even more adversity adversity than his time in the ring. Um, special features on Unchained. It's like a music video, trailer, marketing materials. Special for features on Porno Star is new audio commentary by Tom Mess. So I'll have to see that. New interview with Toshiaki Toyota in a trailer. 
and then Nine Souls special features is new audio commentary by Jasper Sharp, making of outtakes in a trailer. So this is a very good Blu-ray release. Let me look at uh, what I said about Unchain. Where's the... Uh... Let's see here. <clears throat> I did give it a pass grade, so it's not like a bad film. Um... It does give some screen time to some other boxers. There's lots of boxing footage. Pretty good flick. Uh, flick. <clears throat> it focuses on fighters who simply aren't that good. <laughs> so maybe I'll give it a rewatch and I'll like it even more. But yes, this is a Region B release on this. Good box set. It's good. And of course, I picked up the new Third Window Films box set. Toshiaki Toyota 2005 to 2021. Some of these movies I've really been wanting to cover on my channel for years. So I'm really excited that it got an official release. Because I've been wanting to cover Hanging Garden for years. I've been wanting to review Monsters Club for years. I'm Flash Sucked, so I don't I don't know if I'm going to bother reviewing <laughs> that. That movie sucks. But maybe I'll watch it again. Maybe I'll like it. I'm not promising anything. Maybe I'll review it anyway. Uh, and then they get the three short films, which I'll probably do a separate review on these. Wolf's Calling, Day of Destruction, and Go See a Cool Yourself. So, yes. Yes. Um, I'll give you a little little blurb on Hanging Garden and, uh, and Monsters Club. These are movies no one ever talks about, which is why I'm so glad they released them. Nobody ever talks about these movies. Uh, Hanging Garden, okay, is... Got all my Word docs open at the same time here. Excuse me. Oh, uh, here it is right here. This is an odd film about a dysfunctional family with a strict rule. Keep no secrets from each other. Be ashamed of nothing. So you have broken relationships between the family members that are explored in depth. You have mother, father, son, daughter, and grandmother. And uh, each character is developed. Great performances. The music's very good. Camera work is good. A little bit on the perverted side, but nothing, you know, crazy. Um, very good movie. I cannot wait to rewatch it and review that one. Cannot wait. Then we have Monsters Club. I must have. Hold on. This one has a pretty interesting story. In the secluded, snow-covered mountains, a man lives alone, completely disconnected from the rest of the world, and makes triggered bombs that he sends through the mail. So this is kind of like a Japanese interpretation alteration of the anti-industrial philosophy of Ten Kaczynski, also known as the Unabomber. You know, deliberately paced, dialogue-driven film with most of the discussions taking place between the main character and his family members who are both living and dead. And the lead actor in that one is Eita. Gives a really good performance. Really cool psychological drama. I, again, very much look forward to rewatching it and reviewing that one. I'm Flash. Yeah, after a wealthy leader of a religious group is involved in a deadly car accident, he hires a bodyguard to protect him. Um, in my notes say, critics have claimed that this film by Toshiaki Toyota is empty and boring. And I'd have to agree with that assessment. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to rewatch it, but uh, I'm not expecting much. I thought that film, oh, I did not like it. And then the, the short films, I did see Wolf's Calling and Day of Destruction, both of which I enjoyed have not seen Go Sepiku Yourself. So I'll probably review those in a single review vid. Now, Hanging Garden gets an audio commentary by the director in a making of. Deleted scenes as well. Uh, Monsters Club gets a making of in an audio commentary by Jasper Sharp, as well as a new interview by the director. And then I'm Flash gets an audio commentary by Tom Mess. Okay, okay, Tom. Can you sell me on that film? Well, we'll see if Tom Mess could sell me on I'm Flash. I'm, I'm looking forward to it more now. New interview with Toshiaki Toyota, making a featurette, and premiere, premiere footage. So, yes. 
I'm very glad this director got got some love, man. Because most of the films in these box sets are are good, man. Very underappreciated director, but it's nice to see him get some love. Now, some of the films that aren't in here, Blue Spring is not in here. So you have to check that one out. I did a review on my channel. Uh, the other one I really liked was Blood of Rebirth, which is really weird. Uh, a lot of people wouldn't like it. I did. Not available anywhere anymore. So maybe somebody will come up with a, with a release. But I heard, I think Third Windows may have said that they couldn't get a good, a good source to, to upgrade to Blu-ray for some reason. So maybe it won't never get a release. But uh, we'll have to see. And then he also did uh, his recent films like Crows Explode, which is pretty good. And then uh, more recent stuff that I have not seen outside of the shorts. So, yeah. Now, the other director I want now is Kaizo Hayashi, who I've reviewed. Uh, go check out uh, my review of The Trap. I think I may talk about him in that. I would love to see a box set of his stuff. But that's that. And now all we got is some TV series, and then, and then we're good here. All right, we got Neo Ultra Q. Oh, yes. Now, I watched the original Ultra Q from way back in the day. The original Ultra Q was, like, from the 60s, right? And uh, this is supposed to be really good, Neo Ultra Q. This is, like, from 2011 or something like that. So I'm really looking forward to see, like, an upgraded version of, of this, this show. This is 12 episodes only. So that's nice. And this is, you know, if you've ever seen the original Ultra Q, it's almost like, almost like a mix of Giant Monster of the Week and the Twilight Zone. It's kind of like a mix of the two. So if they, if this pulled that off and it's a recent series with updated special effects, I'm all for it. So I actually really look forward to, uh, to watching this one. Actually, this is 2013 series, so it's quite recent. And then I got... Four box sets of the Mill Creek releases. Uh, this this Ultra Q is... Uh, who released this? I'm not sure. But it's a Blu-ray. Region A. But yeah, these Ultraman releases are Region A Mill Creek releases. And, like, I bought... I think I bought the Ultraman on, a di on like, a DVD set because it was cheaper. And it was just crap quality. <laughs> it was just crap. So I, I, I just got to get the Blu-rays then. So I ended up getting the first four seasons of Ultraman. Ultraman, which I which I watched all the way through, all the episodes, a lot of fun. Again, Monster of the Week. But Ultraman is like your superhero, right? And he's a normal dude, you know what I mean? And when the monsters show up, you know, he puts on his little, his little glasses and he, he increases in size and turns into Ultraman. And the fun thing about this is that Unlike Godzilla films or Gamera films or a lot of other kaiju films, you actually have, like, a dude fighting the monsters. So it's a different... It's, it's even more hilarious because you got, a, you got a monster in, like, a suit and you have a guy who's the same size. He's, like, he's like throwing punches and giving, like, giving the monster drop elbows and drop kicks and all kinds of stuff. So it's, it's almost like watching professional wrestling with, like, a, a kaiju monster. So there's a lot of entertainment value to be had in this. Yes. So the Ultraman sets. I don't know. Not a lot of special features on these, but I think the the quality is good in terms of the release overall. Then we get Ultra 7, which I also watched all the way through. Just as entertaining as Ultraman. I think the lead actor in this was not quite as, as entertaining. But that's okay. You know, you get Monster of the Week stuff. This one's a little bit more serious uh, in tone. Not not too serious, but a little bit more. But there's some good episodes in this for sure. And then the two that I haven't even had a chance to watch yet. You got Return of Ultraman. And it takes a while to get through these. There's like 50 episodes for each of these shows. I mean, they're only like a half an hour each, but still. It's, an, it's a time investment. And then you get Ultraman Ace. And Mill Creek's released, like, more of these. So I'm going to have to get more gift certificates or something uh, and buy them, buy more of them. Because these are entertaining, man. They really are. And that's, that's it. That's it. So if you've seen any of these, let me know your thoughts. I think most people probably have seen the Korean films. 
Or at least uh, three out of the four, probably. But this other stuff's all up for grabs. I mean, well, most people have probably seen Ricky O. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. And, uh, as always, I will see you next time.